Well, hello. How's everybody doing out there in YouTube land? Well, I guess I'm in YouTube land too, but uh, never mind. Today's a little bit of an anomaly because it's the middle of February and we've been dealing, even on the west coast here, with this uh, polar vortex, which has uh, anointed us with plenty of snow, actually kind of record snowfall for, uh, for February here in Victoria. But, however, we are going to do some topless driving today with this little number which appeared a couple of days ago, uh, dropped out of the sky. Actually, it came from uh, Fiat Victoria, uh, so thank you Fiat Victoria. But anyway, this is a Fiat 124 Spider. You can see all the writing on it, they've got their advertising on it. Let's get a look at it, there we go. Really nice looking car, and I haven't had a chance to drive this, well, I haven't had a chance to drive the uh, 2019 Mazda Miata MX-5, which is the kind of sister car to this. They're made at the same factory, so the running gear is uh, very similar, the chassis and so on, uh, whereas this one has a turbocharged inline four, the Miata has a normally aspirated engine, so they have different power characteristics. All right. So uh, let's have a look at this. So the first thing you notice when you get inside the Fiat 124 Spider is it's a nice little sport coupe. Very tidy, all black interior in this one. I actually don't, don't know what the options are. Okay, so uh, startup procedure, you don't need to put a key anywhere, you just bring your key with you. Um, you put your foot on the brake, that light goes on on the button press the start button and it fires up just gonna turn the turn that down a little bit so in front of you you have a really nice little gauge cluster in the middle is a tachometer the red line of this engine seems to be around 6500 i think peak power is at 5500 um, and on your right you have a speedometer on the left, you have a digital set of gauges with different information in there. Over here on the dashboard, you have a good size, about a seven inch uh, screen here, TFT screen here. I can't remember how, how big it is exactly across, but it's around seven inches across. And um, to access different aspects of this, down here on your console, you have a little wheel you can turn, like so. And you see as you turn the wheel, you get different options here. Press it to get access to whatever you want here. So you press that button. Now I have the mute function on. Mute function is here. You press this and you go on and off. Volume control down here as well. You also have some shortcuts, home button and so on, so you can get the screen back to whatever position you want it to be. Navigation, obviously. Tunes and your home position, so that gives you that opening screen again. Underneath that, they have some really nice HVAC controls here. Each one has a push function on it. This one would push AC, that one would be recirc, this one would be rear defroster. Yes, it has a rear defroster window. And then you just slide the ring around to select what you want. Temperature, fan speed, and different ventilation settings. Really nice, really simple. Um, this has a neat little stubby shifter-y looking thing. Um, this is an automatic, it's a six speed automatic. And to put it in your manual mode, you go to drive, tuck it to the left and then you downshift or upshift depending on what you want. So it actually works quite well. It's fairly quick in response. I don't mind it, it's pretty good. Back to park we go. Press a little button on the top to engage that. You have a few functions on the steering wheel here as many cars do. So there's your volume. Uh, this also accesses your info screen over there. 
and then your cruise control here. So it's a nice tidy little leather wrapped steering wheel. This particular one doesn't have leather in the interior except for the steering wheel if I'm not mistaken. Now one of the cool things about these cars is how easy it is to get the top off. All you do, you just push this button with your thumb, pull down, the windows automatically go down. There's little, there's little hand holds here. Let me see if I can do this while holding the camera. There we go. And back we go. And then you just tuck it in position back here, like that. And you have dropped the top. You're in for topless driving. Uh, to put the top back up, super simple. Pull that lever, grab the handle, boom, and boom, done. What could be more fun than topless driving in the middle of February, huh? Who cares if it's going to freeze? Pop it in manual mode here. So you don't have to suffer the automatic transmission. I'm just a fanatic about manual transmissions or uh, double clutch shifters if possible. That's good too. But uh, in this case, the next best thing is just to do the shifting yourself. Oh, 
should be. Of course, there's going to be more noise right now because I'm driving topless here. No, oh, wind buffeting is not too bad. Probably my wife's hair would be flying around in front of her face, but that's the way it goes when you're doing top-down driving. I don't have enough hair to wave around in front of my face. Looks like it's a six-speed automatic here. And we're not going very fast. We're doing about 85 kilometers an hour right now because I'm driving a convertible, so I'm not really uh, in the mood to, to go super fast or anything like that. But I'm doing 2,000 RPM in fifth gear. I can kick it down to sixth gear. We're at about 1,800 uh, RPM. We did about 90 something kilometers, just around the speed limit. The geometry of the suspension, it just tracks beautifully. It just tracks really, really well. Wow. Nicely done. Very easy to drive. Good stuff. No problem getting some acceleration out of this thing. Just shift down a couple gears, especially with that turbo. You got plenty of torque to move this thing. It's actually quite nice. Visibility is excellent, which is typical of these cars. Uh, I really do like the great visibility. There's a rear camera on this cam on this car as well. Backup camera. I like how you can use the shifter and quickly do your upshifts and downshifts, that's nice. It just brings it more intuitively to me than uh, relying on the automatic. I'm going to do a bit of downshifting as we come to the intersection. That's kind of nice actually, just to listen to the engine. Get a bit of engine braking. Just as you do with the sports car. Okay, I think it's time to put the top up. Boom, done. Windows came down for me. Tops up. Now we're going to do some highway driving. And I thought uh, it might be a bit better audio if, if I didn't have the top down. But as you can see, it's a lot of fun. In mid-February, I can't complain. Very usable. The heating system's very good, obviously, so you have no trouble uh, pouring some nice hot air onto yourself. Make sure you stay warm. Looking forward to driving the MX-5 Miata version as well. It should be interesting to compare the two. 